Hi, I'm Jim, and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. Now, I've got a few emails lately. One was about three or four weeks ago. He's wanted to know how to oil and grease your mower deck. What do we do? The video I put on on greasing and oiling the entire machine, I didn't say anything about the deck because regardless what these people say on YouTube to do to your spindles, there is nothing on the mower deck that needs to be greased. Now you can check, this turns very hard because the brake is on. Now if you engage the mower deck and put a clamp on the pedal where your feet normally are, that will disengage the brake. I can do this in one shot. I just, well, maybe I ought to show you what I use. I just use one of these. They're very handy. You can work them with one hand and you can also release them with one hand. Just put it up here on this pedal and if it's on the mower deck or if it's on the mower you can spin this clamp around in case it's hitting something out here. But that disengages the brake on the spindle. Now this one I'm saying I probably should put bearings in the spindle on that because that should not spin that freely. And if your blade looks like this one, I don't know how good you can see that. Let me grab something put behind here. There's basically <laughs> nothing left to this blade. These are extremely dangerous to use on this machine. I mean, it's wore down, so I got almost an inch of clearance here. Snapper blades don't have any clearance. They fit up inside of this lip. That's what gives them the extraordinary vacuum power they have. This is a patented deck. Not many machines will have them. You may start seeing, him, seeing them because the patents are pretty much all expired by now. Patents are only good for 20 years. Now he said, what on here do I need to grease or oil? Nothing. There's nothing on here. You have your spindle. You have an idler pulley. And on some machines, I think it's mostly the European machines, I've had a lot of questions. What are these three holes for? That's for the extra idler pulley that the European machines have on them. And some of the machines they sell in this country have them. Very few. And I had another question. Well, this one's only got, this is a older machine. The newer machines have more holes in them. Let me move you around here. This one only has two holes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There's one hiding down here. It does have three. I had a question on that. Why does it have three holes? Where did my pad of paper go? There's the third one. You can see the paper back there, I hope. These outside two holes are to bolt down your deflector so it's not bouncing up, especially this one. The spring is broke. That should snap back. That's for two bolts to bolt your deflector down. This one is to bolt down your th uh, thatcher. <laughs> yeah, your mulching cover, if you were lucky enough to have one. They don't make them anymore. But they hooked in up here like your deflector does for your chute, for your bagger, that also uses this hole to bolt that on. So that's what these three holes are for. 
Now you do have other holes in this deck. Uh, if you can tip you down a little more, you can see two nuts right here. And the bolts are on the inside. And these are all carriage bolts, so they're smooth on the inside. You have two up here, right in the center, on the front. And you have two more back here. So they're kind of evenly spaced around. They are for anti-scalping wheels. That's not a real big thing on them. Not many machines come with them. That 33 inch has them on there. If you want to see what they look like, let me wiggle you over here. This is the one that's front and center. And then there's two, I don't know if I can tip this thing down that far. Here's one down here. Now you can get them all at partstree.com, but <laughs> Parts Tree does not sell anything in a kit, okay? So if you wanted these wheels, you would have to buy one of these front brackets and two of the back brackets. You would have to buy three wheels, you'd have to buy three bolts and three nuts. They don't sell an assembly. And I believe there's a tube inside of here that these wheels spin on. You have to buy them separate also. I've never had a pair on my machines, so I don't really know what's involved in a set. That one's a 33 inch I bought up in Traverse City, Michigan and I'm going to repair it and then sell it. It's a big machine, has a 17 and a half horse engine that runs nice. Uh, it is a 33 inch high vac and it also has a clamshell bagger. They haven't made them in years and years. And I have all the parts. Now getting back to the spindle, on why there's nothing on this machine you want to grease. This machine does have a grease fitting right back here somewhere. Oh, there it is right there. This is a spindle out of a snapper. It's a newer one. And if you notice, there is no grease fittings anywhere on this spindle. You have two vent holes up here, one there and one here. Anytime you have an enclosed tube, housing, anything, it has to have a vent hole. Heat will build up in there and it's got to get out somehow. If you try to grease this or this one, this one has a grease vein. If you try to pump grease into there, all it's going to do is come out these holes. Now there's some of these people on YouTube that say, oh man, what you got to do to make your bearings last forever? No, you're ruining your bearings. Just take a screwdriver and pry one of these shields out. So it looks like this bearing. <laughs> Sorry. The camera used to be over here on the side. Now it's up here on the top. <laughs> Go figure. But that's what one looks like that's open on one side and shielded on the other. The original snappers had them bearings. This is a bad bearing. It rattles. <laughs> <clears throat> but even if you have a machine with those bearings in it, you've got this entire cavity from there's the top bearing from about here all the way down to about here now to get any grease into the old style bearings you had to pump this whole cavity full of grease well grease is going to do the same thing that your snapper lube does only even worse because the snapper lube is a lot thinner than grease. Grease is a lithium-based material. It's made out of soap. 
it's going to dry out and harden up. Okay, now you got this thing full of grease. It's going to get old and hard. Now, you start pumping grease in down here with all this old crap. What do you think you're pushing into your bearings? The new grease? No. You're pumping all this old crap up into your bearings, and it's going to destroy them even faster. Bearings today that you buy are permanently permanent lubricated for the life of the bearing. Now, when I rebuild spindles at the shop on machines, I do all the machine repair work and maintenance, and I buy a bearing like this, I fill that bearing 25%. So I go from about here to about here, that's 25%, and I pack it with a German bearing grease called Kluber, very expensive. I put 25% in that bearing and I spin it to work it around and I put the machine together. That is all that bearing needs for the entire life of the bearing. Bearings have life on them. They have a life cycle. The bearings that I was working with at the shop on these spindles, I had one spindle I rebuilt that took four bearings, high speed precision bearings, two in each side. And I rebuilt it just the way I was told by the bearing guys, the pros, and that bearing lasted about a thousand hours and they burned up. The boss, boss came and said, you must have did something wrong. He says, that bearing didn't last very long. So I called up my bearing guy. I told him what he, what he said. He said, how long has it been running? I said, we could probably got about a thousand hours on it. He said, then you got a whole lot more life out of that bearing than you should have. Bearings won't last forever, but if you over grease them, which you will, if you use that fitting, you will destroy them even faster. I use, I got a box around here somewhere. If I could find it quick, which I probably can't, let me go look. Here's the bearings I put in the spindles. They're Timken. And the number is P204 RR 6A4362. Now if you look real close on here, these are now they gotta say it on here somewhere. I can't see it where this one says. Maybe this is an old one. But all the Tipkin bearings today are made in China. This one does not say. This must have been an old one. But the bearings are made with our steel. The bearings that are made in China with their steel, they're not going to last you two years. They're junk. And we have our inspectors checking the product that they're making. That's why I don't worry about buying a Timken bearing made in China. Because I know they're just as good as the ones that were made here. I hope. I've never had a problem with them. But that's the ins and outs on a mower deck. There's nothing on it to grease or oil. Your idler pulley up there pretty much has a sealed bearing on it also. When it goes bad, you just got to replace it. Nothing you can do with it. And again, if you got a more, if you got a blade that looks like this, please throw it away. Because the next thing that's going to happen are these ends are going to break off. And when they do, they're going to come shooting right out this hole. They're going to bounce around and make some noise first. Then they're going to come shooting out of that hole. 
But that's it. I hope I've helped somebody save their bearings. And again, you're going to see a lot of people on YouTube telling you to pry them shields out of there. But don't do it. You're not doing yourself any good or the bearing. So if you have any questions, send me an email. And that's Jim's Fix It Shop at gmail.com. Until next time, work safe, have fun, and keep on snapping. So long.